Today on Shredding Spree, I've got two aggressive hardtails built by the same guy. Why? It's no secret, I'm a hardtail guy. Probably at least two thirds of all my bike rides are done on a hardtail. Now that's partially because of the type of terrain I mostly have in my area, but it's also due to my appreciation for simplicity and the extra challenge on the trail. There also might just be a little bit of BMX nostalgia in there too. Over the last year and a half, I've built up two hardtails from Dolly Bike. I started with their Eponym Enduro Hardtail 29er, and then about a year later, Dolly sent me their 27.5 trail bike called the Rally. These are both hand-built steel frames from Kimberly, Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire? Nottinghamshire. I even built these up with just about the same parts list. So at a glance, one might assume that they're both meant for the same purpose. And it's definitely not cross-country. Both of these bikes are poised for charging trails and eating rough terrain. Now that begs the question, what's the point of having two mountain bikes that seem so similar? Well, let's be honest, I'm spoiled and I have a bike problem. But seriously, while these two bikes do look strikingly similar, and they both do fit into that agro hardtail category, a closer look will reveal that each bike was designed with a different purpose in mind, each with its own set of strong suits and shortcomings. And today, I'd like to highlight some of those qualities by showing you what makes me decide to pull one off the wall over another on any given day. And hopefully my thoughts on the differences might just help one of you out there identify which direction you'd like to go with your next bike purchase. But if nothing else, enjoy the show. So let's kick things off with my main squeeze, the Eponym Enduro Hardtail. This bike is designed around 29 inch wheels and it lands firmly within today's modern mountain bike geometry standards. It's a slack SOB at 64 degrees with a fairly tall stack and a steep 77 degree seat tube angle. The Eponym is so comfortable on climbs, I'm more likely to grab it over the rally if I know I'm in for one of my longer pedal days. That steep seat tube angle has an interesting effect of making the cockpit feel a little cozy while in the seated position. But once you drop the seat and stand on the pedals, the rig almost seems to get longer and its stability really shines through. Weighing in at about 31 pounds, this whip definitely won't be confused for a cross-country rig. But it is a hardtail, so it doesn't feel like a dog when you're on the pedals. Plus, with that extra weight comes an incredibly calm ride quality at high speeds that you just don't get from an XC hardtail. My Eponym is definitely the most confident descender of any hardtail I've ever ridden. And that's not just due to the modern geometry, it's also the supple quality of the steel frame. This bike is quiet and it barely vibrates over chatter. Compared to a lot of the hardtails I've ridden in the past, this thing feels more confident at higher speeds because it's less sharp and jarring over the bumps. According to Strava, I'll surpass 30 miles per hour regularly at my local trail system. My trails aren't excessively chunky, but regardless, a hardtail in the dirt is quite a handful at those speeds. On my old hardtails, my vision would actually start getting scrambled from the bumps and vibrations in those spots. But I don't get that with the accompanying fear nearly as much on this steel rig. And I definitely think this is a good time to note that I spec both of these bikes with parts that are actually known to reduce vibration. Things like the bird spokes, the robust tires, and the one-up carbon bars all contribute to smoothing out the ride quality. The overall length of the bike coupled with the 29 inch wheels helps the Eponym maintain momentum once it's up to speed. This makes it my choice if I'm going racing or if I just wanna make sure I can keep up with a fast group of full suspension riders. I would say that the 29 inch wheels stay just a little bit more planted over bumps on the trail. This makes the handling and braking just a bit more predictable than, I don't know, let's just say something like a 27.5 inch wheeled hardtail. But don't get the wrong idea here. We're definitely still talking about hardtails which are inherently poppy and bouncy. A hardtail will almost definitely always be more difficult to hold on to than a fully suspended bike. I've got my Eponym spec with a 150 mm fork, which I think is borderline too much travel for a hardtail since the geometry is altered so greatly by the fork's compression. But I do like to have the extra travel for the occasional huck to flat. 
So I try to set my fork up to be as progressive as possible to keep it from running too deep in its travel, therefore keeping the rig stance a little bit more consistent. Overall, I'd say the f embodies everything I'd want in a rowdy hardtail. Its combination of high speed stability and composure in the rough or steep terrain makes it really fun to ride in just about any scenario I encounter out in the mountains. <laughs> Woo, that was a little rowdy. Yeah. Now, while I personally see this eponym as the pinnacle of the modern aggressive hardtail, that title doesn't come without just a couple of critiques. This first one doesn't even really apply to me, but if you're a rider that likes to run large volume tires, you might be disappointed with the rear tire clearance. Dolly states that the eponym comes with enough clearance to accommodate a 2.6 tire, but I think that'd be a pretty tight squeeze, especially since I run 2.5 and I already get a pretty decent amount of tire rub under flex. Anything bigger, and I think the tire rub would start to get excessive, especially with a wheel that's slightly out of true, which is actually quite common for guys like me. A quick side note to go along with that statement, that could just be specific for my build, because I do think I got a custom chainstay length when I ordered this bike from Dolly. So if you are going with a Dolly bike, it's probably important to communicate with the builder to make sure that it's gonna fit the tire you wanna run. My only other gripe isn't even really a gripe about the bike, it's just the nature of steel. You gotta grease the shit out of anything that's gonna contact this frame, and maybe even disassemble and re-grease from time to time, just to make sure the metals aren't gonna seize together. I made the mistake of getting my seat post stuck in the frame, which then led to one very stressful afternoon as I wrestled it out of the tube. No, 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 no! At the cost of a destroyed seat and lots of sweat and tears, I finally got it out. After the dust settled, I honed out the inside of the seat tube and probably put enough grease on that seat post that it would even make Ron Jeremy blush. All right, that covers that. Now on to the rally. As I alluded to before, the rally is a very capable platform for most trail scenarios. But I've found that this setup inspires me to approach my rides with a different mindset. Mainly, where the eponym instills a feeling of stability and speed, the rally loves to boost and jib. As mentioned, it's built around 27.5 wheels. It has a shorter reach, a shorter chain stay, and a one degree steeper head tube angle at 65 degrees. The rally takes the idea of a playful mountain bike to the fullest extent. This means launching off every little rise at the end of the trail is par for the course. Lifting the rear wheel to adjust your entry angle into a hairpin turn is a breeze, and floating the front wheel up into a manual requires almost no effort. Credit for these qualities goes to the bike's tall stack and overall compact build. Many of my local trails are narrow bench cuts that meander along steep hillsides, and I might even say that this is the rally's happy place. The rally carves around hairpin turns that take some pre-planning and perhaps some trials hops to clean on a bigger bike and it makes short work of chicane-style switchbacks with the flick of the handlebars. The rally gets up to speed quick, which keeps me smiling even when I'm riding areas with sharp turns, tight squeezes between trees, and punchy climbs. One of the things I'm always happy to point out about hardtails is their versatility. I've always felt like in the right hands, a hardtail can shine in a number of different environments, and I think the rally is a great example of this. Like, have you ever ridden a pump track on an enduro bike? It can be not so great. A few laps through these rollers on a suspended bike will prove that all that suspension actually makes the bike feel sluggish and anchored in this terrain. However, a bike like the Rally with its short and rigid rear end makes it easy to clear these short jumps and generates more speed from pumping through the steep transitions. But how about big BMX jumps? I've ridden this line at Safley Bike Park a handful of times on my Eponym, and while I was able to clean it just fine on the 29er, it felt pretty oversized on these steep BMX style jumps. Before I got the rally, I borrowed a friend's 26 inch full rigid dirt jumper, and it clearly maintained better speed through the line. But being so used to mountain bikes, I felt a little cramped and dicey on the dirt jumper. And as someone like me that rarely rides dirt jumps, and primarily rides trails on mountain bikes, I'm just more comfortable on a bigger bike. 
and the rally lands nicely in that zone where it's big enough for me to feel confident on trails, but small enough to still get the most out of the transitions on a BMX line like this. Now I'm not saying it's a perfect replacement for a dirt jumper, it's still oversized and a little bit too compliant, but you'd be hard pressed to find another trail bike that can fake it as well as the rally can on this stuff. Now there were two things that really surprised me about the Rally, and the first of that is how much lighter it was than the Eponym. Coming in at about 27 pounds, it's almost a full four pounds lighter than its 29er big brother. This was shocking to me at first, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. The smaller wheels, the smaller tires, the shorter tubing, it all just adds up to a little bit less weight. The other thing I was pleasantly surprised about with the Rally was just how supple it still was. With its shorter tubing and smaller wheels, I expected it to be a quite a bit stiffer ride than the 29er. But after switching back and forth between the bikes for a few months, I find the difference in stiffness almost unnoticeable between the two bikes. If I were going to warn anyone about the traits of the Rally, I'd say that when comparing it to its big brother, the Rally can start to run out of confidence at higher speeds a little sooner than the Eponym. It's such a quick handling bike compared to the 29er that I do feel myself squeezing the brakes a little bit more when the speeds are getting high and the trail's getting rough. At the higher speeds, catching rocks does feel a little bit more harsh with the smaller wheels as well. Dolly says this frame maxes out at a 2.6 tire width just like the Eponym. But this rear triangle actually looks to be a bit more spacious for the wider tire. Just like on the other bike, I imagine this changes a bit depending on your frame size. One other thing that caught my attention while I was doing this build was the tight clearance between the chainstay and the front chain ring. There's almost no space at all, but after 500 plus miles of riding through rock, sand, mud, and creek crossings, it's been a non-issue. The last thing I'll mention is that when I took the rally to the Kohler Mountain Bike Preserve in Bentonville, Arkansas, I felt like I was working really hard to keep my speed up on their longer jump lines. And it got me wondering if the bigger wheels with the longer geo of the Eponym would have been a better bike for that situation. In the end, I think I'd describe the Rally as a super fun and capable trail bike with some BMX tendencies. With its compliance and stability, it can definitely run with any other trail hardtail when it comes to the rougher terrain, while still being light and quick enough to party at the jump spot. I'd say its pedaling favors the quick burst over the big mile days because of the smaller wheels and more compact cockpit. But if I'm going to be on the saddle for more than three hours, I think I'd rather just be on the 29er. Now that I've shared my thoughts on the things that I enjoy about each bike, I think it's important to note how much overlap there is between these two rigs. Realistically, no matter where I'm riding, if I'm in the mood to ride a hardtail, I can grab either one of these bikes and have a great time. And if you're trying to decide between two similarly categorized bikes like these, it's important to identify what each bike's intended personality is and how does that compare to where you're going to be riding most often and what you enjoy most about your rides. And in the case of these two specific bikes, if you value overall speed while still getting the playfulness and climbing ability of a hardtail, maybe the Eponym is your choice. But if you consider yourself more of a rabbit than a cheetah, maybe the Rally is the bike for you. You almost can't go wrong either way. We do not take a stance. Personally, I plan on keeping both of these bikes because now I'm addicted to having the choice. And variety is the spice of life, my friend. Thanks for watching. a lot of walking for a crappy shot. <laughs> and got a little weird. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs>